everyone. I wanted to pop in and have a little bit of a chat with you and say hello. This year I'm going to be focusing more on YouTube and I'm doing that for a couple of reasons. One reason is that I really enjoy longer form content. So in the past I've had a podcast, I like creating long videos. I am trying to embrace reels but it is taking a little bit of time. The other reason is that I wanted a new challenge. So it's a new year and I felt like it was time to sink myself into or sink my teeth into something that is a bit challenging. So here I am and for the next few months I'll be sharing a variety of videos and a few excerpts from my mixed media e-course, the Create a Blend art program and then once that wraps up in March I'll be focusing more on creating fresh content for YouTube. So today I'm sharing an excerpt from a Q&A that comes from the very first module of the program which is called Permission to Play and the topic is how to get over your fear of the blank canvas. So I've got my coffee and I have my laptop open with the questions. So let's get straight into it. And the first one is, how do you activate your page canvas at the start? Many people get nervous at the empty canvas. Can you share some different approaches? So this is a really good question considering the theme for this month, which is permission to play. So before I get into specific approaches that you might want to try, I want to talk about why you might be feeling nervous and why sometimes we put off making art, we procrastinate, we do everything but put paint to paper. And I know all about it. It happens to me. It also happens to me when I'm filming videos like this. And it's all because I get fearful. I'm scared that whatever it is that I'm making won't be good enough. And really that's what it's all rooted in, fear. Fear of wasting your time, wasting your supplies, not knowing what to do, messing everything up and making a big muddy mess. It's all about the fear that you are feeling and it really can stop you in your tracks. So what we need to look at is how can we move through those fears? And one of the things that I find most helpful, and I almost have to trick myself into doing things by breaking it down into really small parts. And so the small things really do matter. So let me explain that a bit better. If you sit down and you have a blank piece of paper or a canvas in front of you, and as you look at that, you start thinking things like, I'm going to finish this painting. I'm then going to photograph it. I'm gonna put it up on my website. I'm gonna sell the painting. I might license it, turn it into products. Maybe I'll enter it into a competition. I'm gonna win the prize. If your brain starts working like that, you're gonna sit down and feel like you need to paint a masterpiece. That is a whole lot of pressure. So the way that I work is I break things up into parts. So quite often when I sit down at my painting table, all I do is paint some backgrounds. Or if I'm working towards a series and I know that there are going to be particular shapes or illustrations, designs in that series, then what I will do is practice, you know, do a whole lot of botanical shapes. And that will be one session of painting. And in doing that, I sort of trick myself into it not being all that important. But the more you do that, the more you build up your creative muscle. And then when it comes to bringing those things together, it never feels quite as big. So breaking down your creative process into enjoyable short bursts of art making is one of the best things that you can do. The other aspect to that is that I rarely would sit down and have just one piece of paper in front of me. I am almost always working on at least two pieces at a time, but often more. Often I will have five or six pieces on the go because I find it intimidating to just work on one piece. Again, it's all that pressure. This piece has to be perfect. But if I have six or seven pieces, then you know maybe three of them will work out and the other four are just a, a vehicle for me to practice and explore and learn what not to do. Another thing that I find very helpful is to work in sketchbooks. And I have all different kinds of sketchbooks. Some are fancier, some are scrappier, so that I can try out ideas and test things out in a non-threatening way. And when I'm working, I might be in the middle of the process for a piece and I'll think of something I want to add. So it might be a shape or a mark or a color. 
But when I'm looking at the piece, I'm not 100% sure. I can feel that fear coming in and I'm like, oh my gosh, if I add this now, I might ruin the whole painting. So what I'll do instead is get my sketchbook out and practice that color or that shape. I might even cut it out and hold it over the painting just to test out the idea before I fully commit to it in the painting. So these types of things are really helpful for giving you confidence, making many pieces at once, doing studies, working in sketchbooks. They will help you so that you feel more relaxed and comfortable when you are working on those final paintings. The other thing about breaking your creative process down into small steps is that it means that you can fit art in when you are having a really busy day. You might only have 15 minutes available or half an hour available, but it's enough time to maybe figure out what colours you are going to use in a painting. Or it might be enough time to doodle in your sketchbook a shape that will eventually end up in a finished piece. So these are all things that I do. I have a very scattered creative practice and it might seem like it's all over the place. Like I'm working on pieces, then I'm on the canvas, then I'm in my sketchbook, but it actually really helps me to get over this fear of the blank page. I have so many blank pages around me that it just makes it easier not to be fearful because I'm always messing them up. I'm always slapping things on a page, splashing, ripping things out, trying new things. And when you are doing it all the time, it becomes less scary and less threatening. Another thing that you might find helpful is to keep a notebook or a diary, a journal where you write down how you are feeling as you are working and you give yourself a bit of a pep talk if you are going through one of those days when you are in a negative spiral. So sometimes I will do this in a journal, but sometimes the best thing is actually just to chat about it with someone. So my husband, Richie, gets this all the time when I am struggling and having a difficult day, either with my paintings or filming classes, I will usually come to him and talk it through. And it won't be long before he offers a fresh perspective and I realize that I'm making a really big deal out of something, something that happens to all creative people. We all make bad paintings. We all struggle sometimes when we are trying to get a new idea out. It's a very normal part of the creative process. I really want you to understand that when I put a painting out into the world on Instagram, that's my best version. There may be three or four other versions that are in my drawer or I've cut them up or turned them into collage pieces or something like that because I do not sit down and paint a complete painting that I want to sell and share every single time. Far, far from it. So it's important to understand that and realize that we are all in the same kind of creative process and experiencing these struggles. There are two more things that I want to say, and these are about some of the other reasons why you might be procrastinating or putting off making art. And the first one is when you sit down to make art and you really aren't in the mood, and it's not just because you are you know, being lazy or something like that, it's actually because you are genuinely exhausted. And this sometimes happens to me where I'll sit down and I just can't seem to do it anything like I try and shuffle my supplies around but there's this underlying like ugh, feeling in my body and usually I just need to rest like it's not the day to be making art and if you've got a lot on your plate whether that's you know you've got a lot of things to do or whether you are carrying a, a lot of mental load or emotional load then it might not be the time to force yourself to make art. So it's really important to be able to recognize where you are in the creative process because there are times when that can show up, but the best thing to do is actually to give yourself a bit of a breather. Um, I'm all for showing up. You know, I, I often give myself a 30 minute time limit where I'll sit down and say, okay, give it a go, pick up some paint, make a few marks, and if you get somewhere in 30 minutes, then you're on the road. But if you are still after 30 minutes struggling to even do anything, then there's probably something deeper going on. And you might need to actually just take a walk, catch up with a friend for coffee, um, put your feet up, watch a show, you tune out, whatever it is you need. And it's important to be able to recognize when that's happening. And your time limit might be different. It might be 10 minutes. 
You might try for 10 minutes and then go, you know what, I'm going to do something else. And there are all sorts of other things that you can do for your creativity that don't involve painting on a canvas or a blank page. And the second thing I wanted to mention is if you do not have enough play in your art practice. So in other words, if you're taking things too seriously and everything is about finishing paintings to get them onto a wall or to sell them, and you don't have a little bit of time or breathing space to just mess about. And that's what this module is all about. We'll be doing experimental studies. Some of the stuff you'll see is quite different from my normal creative work. And that's really important. It's really important to have opportunities to do things that stretch your creative muscles and give you an opportunity to try things that maybe don't fit within your style or something like that, but are really fun. And that's one of the things that I want to emphasize is making sure that you leave yourself some time for play. And you might not even share that on Instagram. This could just be personal stuff that you do. It could be very different. It might even be using a completely different medium like pottery or something like that. But play is a really good way to overcome the fear of the blank page and the canvas. So I've talked a lot about the mindset side of things, but the question did ask, what are some specific approaches and how do I activate the page and the canvas? So I want to switch in a bit to talking about supplies and techniques here and share with you three ways that I like to get started. So the first way that I often start pieces is to do very expressive, loose line work and often with a messy supply. So something like charcoal or perhaps a Neocolor 2 pastel that dissolves in water, that's water soluble. So I really like getting something like a scribbly line down on the page. And I often wonder if people look at my work and think, gosh, all she does is scribble but I do scribbles very deliberately at the beginning of the creative process to loosen up my arm and just to make me realize that this is all about having fun and experimenting. And I find those loose expressive lines help to do that. So you might want to start your canvas or page using something like a, a charcoal, a big marker, some crayons, some pencils, and just get some marks down. And you know, it could be a good idea to use your non-dominant hand, uh, use something that's messy, rub it around, maybe get a paper towel and smudge it. And that can be a wonderful way to really just let go at the very, very beginning. This next approach has a similar kind of mindset behind it. And the idea is to use a supply that isn't easy to control. So I really like using drippy paint at the beginning of a canvas or even on paper. I love using inks, watercolor and fluid acrylic to start my paintings. And I often will just flick my brush and dribble paint on the surface and allow it to move around in ways that I really can't fully control. So that can be a really good thing to straight away relinquish control to the creative process. And fluid acrylics are great for that. You'll see that I often use like a little yogurt container, pour some acrylic paint in there, add a bit of water, get it very splashy and then apply it to the page or to the canvas. So that's one way. And you can also rotate the canvas, spray it, get drips, just get a really fluid drippy layer down. And then the final approach that I wanted to share, and you will see this one in the module as well, and that is using something like a stencil to quickly get pattern down into a painting. So when you use a stencil, you don't have to think too hard. You have a design already there that can spark your creative process. The same goes for adding in collage papers. That can be a really fun way to start a painting and also get you that instant burst of pattern and some creative juices quickly. So stencils and collage papers are a really great way to get things started. So there's three ways that I like to start a painting. Expressive line work using messy supplies like charcoal and pastels, 
drippy paint, so you get lots of splashes and relinquish control. And the final way is to get some quick pattern down, either using stencils or collage papers. So I hope you find that helpful and that this little chat inspires you to just get stuck in, work on a few different pieces at a time, have a sketchbook, work on scrappy studies. So all of those things contribute to a deep, underlying confidence. So that way you have the confidence to pretty much take on anything that you want to. And that's what I found over years of working in this way that I might have a few little hiccups, but usually I can correct myself and bounce back. In fact, I often joke with my husband about my ability to bounce back. I think we call that bounce back ability. And this is one of those things that you can cultivate over time. So the more painting you do, the more experimenting and spreading yourself across different kinds of art activities, the more you will build this deep underlying confidence.